we say, well, it's just, you know, we, we're making much to do about nothing. They wanted to destroy uh, Trent Lott. I mean, they went after him on BET, and this man had to eventually apologize, but nothing from uh, Senator Robert Byrd. Hypocrisy of liberals and media around how they reacted to Dodd's praise of Byrd on the Senate floor and the reaction of uh, Trent Lott praising an old man that was going to be dead within a year. Contrast that with the absolute silence of the liberal media around uh, Bob Byrd being praised. I mean, a Klansman, a Klan leader, not just a member of the Klan, not just influenced by the Klan, but a operational leader of the Klan. One of the things that has mystified me most over the last few years is to look at the civil rights establishment and have them uh, regard the news of Colin Powell uh, becoming America's first black Secretary of State, uh, Condi Rice becoming America's second black national security advisor, the first female black national, national security advisor. The first, by the way, was Colin Powell appointed by uh, President Reagan, by the way. And then to see Condi Rice eventually become America's first black female Secretary of State. And not hear uh, some of them say, look, we have differences in opinion over their policies. We don't necessarily approve of everything they believe in, but this is a great step forward for Americans and black Americans in particular. What you hear instead is that, uh, well, they're tokens and um, maybe they're wannabe whites and you have these awful cartoons, political cartoons that were done after, after Condi Rice was named Secretary of State where she was uh, sitting on a porch barefoot uh, looking like some kind of a welfare queen or something like that speaking in jive. You had another one where she was a parrot sitting on George Bush's uh, shoulder with uh, big fat lips. I mean, just the most awful, hideous uh, racial stereotypes, anti-black stereotypes, uh, being hurled in the, in the face of a very, very intelligent woman who was uh, a, a Stanford University provost, speaks Russian, very accomplished woman, from all we can gather now, an effective diplomat. Tendency to ascribe positive things to whiteness and negative things to blackness. So the kid who goes to the library and who plays the piano, uh, the, the classics, um, who studies is acting white. What it says basically, the people who argue that way, is that we black people uh, don't have control over our own minds, we're not allowed to think what we wish, and we're essentially supposed to walk around in a racial plantation where everybody's liberal, everyone believes in the Democratic Party, and in that respect we're not really men and women, but sort of uh, like cattle. And so then they think, well, do I want to let my race down by acting white? Uh, do I want to betray my people by acting white? And they say, well, I guess not, I guess I'll act black and come to school unprepared not participate, not speak in proper English, talk jive, and what happens? You see a young black child's mind close up like that, and the kid's scores go down. And what have you done? You've ruined an American citizen for life. Condi Rice and, and, and Colin Powell, are, we don't know if they're really black, but the drug dealer on the corner is black. Bill Clinton was declared the first black president while Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice is accused of acting white. Does that mean if she became the president, she would be the first white black president? If Condoleezza Rice is acting white, which white is she acting like? And if Bill Clinton is black, which black is he most like? Could it be that Martin Luther King's dream has been realized, but not quite the way he envisioned it? I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons and former slaves and sons and former slaves on Many have wondered how Reverend Martin Luther King would feel about the success of people like Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell, Clarence Thomas, and hundreds of other black American leaders who are challenging the status quo and peacefully shaking the establishment. The civil rights movement in America serves as a blueprint for every other cause. Most leaders in the black American community resent the comparison of their struggle for equality with the special interest groups that try and make that success their own.
community, uh, I'm not speaking for all blacks, but the ones that I, who talk to me and who talk, uh, who I hear on radio shows and on television shows, they're outraged that the, that the gay community would use the, the rich heritage of the civil rights movement to promote their own agenda. See, they talk about the civil rights movement and they want the rights, but they never talk about the responsibilities. You see, in the civil rights movement, you couldn't be drunk and, and, and vulgar and be participant in the marches. We had certain standards that you had to conform to. But you never hear the gay movement talking about the standards of opposing pedophilia, of, of, of opposing uh, these serial sexual relationships. I get emails, calls, uh, conversations frequently, and people will say, how dare you? And now how dare you and your cousin Dr. Bernice King, who is Martin Luther King's youngest daughter, uh, Dr. King and her pastor, Bishop Eddie Long, led a march in Atlanta, Georgia with hundreds of thousands of people uh, on behalf of marriage between a man and a woman. And Bernice said at that time, she says, I know deep in my sanctified soul that my dad didn't march for same-sex marriage. The homosexual marriage issue is what opened the eyes of most black pastors across this country that have a conservative worldview. The way they interpret the Bible would align more with the religious right, if you will. They are very, very upset about this homosexual marriage issue. Uh, so they're starting to look at other political options than the Democrat Party. There was a huge message that was sent during the last presidential election, especially from places from Oregon to Ohio, about same-sex marriages on the ballot. No one wants that. Uh, these liberals are out of step with the value system of Americans. They were asking us to redefine marriage, the pillar of society. You look at black Americans, see what lack of marriage has already done to destroy black life. This was not going to be accepted in black America. The, the gay movement, the peace movement, uh, the environmental movement, all of these uh, emanated from the civil rights movement. Uh, a week before Bill Clinton had his attack, he was in New Orleans, and there were about 20 of us in a room. And what I said to him in that room, I said, you know the problem with the Democratic leadership is the same-sex marriage, it's positional abortion, and nobody in leadership of Democrats are addressing the opposite view of what we hear. Nobody in, in my African-American community votes uh, for uh, anti-gay marriage because it's a conservative position. A conservative the label has nothing, nothing to do with why they would uh, not support a candidate who would support abortion. Who gave the definition yeah. of the conservative and the liberal? And see what happened, because if you really analyze black leadership, most of it is conservative. Now let me tell you, the reason um, President Bush is the president today is because of conservative black leadership. Exactly. At that point of election, Democrats didn't think about Democrats. You understand? They were looking at the values, especially the same-sex marriage, the abortion piece. So you had a lot of leaders that just would not push the Democratic candidate hypersensitive to moral issues because we're moral people and we're spiritual people. I believe that we're the moral conscience of this country. I mean, quite frankly, um, we freed ourselves on a moral issue. We freed ourselves without guns or money, okay, because we were morally right. The abortion laws were a violation of life, and slavery was the violation of personal liberty. So there are m many, many areas where it's similar. And I'm of the opinion that as with slavery, the nation will have to settle the abortion uh, discussions uh, similarly because it is a big moral question and there is no scientific or technical answer. We're not going to be able to go state by state and say, well, maybe if we make a little concession here, a little concession there. If it's wrong once, it's wrong all the time. And here's another one that I've had experience with personally. I've been in and out of their abortion mill one after another after another time. And yet some will say, well, you shouldn't have done it so much. Why don't you just use birth control? Why would you use birth control if abortion is legal and there's nothing wrong? with it and if there is something wrong with it then why is it legal and that's the same question that was asked during slavery I see uh, that we have a 
We have a lining up of forces today. There are those who would say everything that has to do with God should be eradicated from the public landscape, from the courtrooms. We want to take in God we trust out of the money. We want, you know, one nation under God out of the flag. We don't want to pledge allegiance and relate to any sovereign God, no, no eternal transcendent presence at all. We don't want to do that. that. There are those on that side. And there are those who talk and they want God's presence. They see God's presence in all things. And uh, there is a battle royal going on. And um, this issue about black churches and having an issue with regard, I mean, every time there's a, an election, a uh, democratic election, they all parade through our churches for that weekend before the election and give their little spiel and, and uh, try to uh, capture the vote that they already know they have. And so they, they do allow people to come into the churches and speak on politics if it's the politics that they want. Tired of being misled, we're tired of being lied to, we're tired of going around saying we apologize for being believers, we're tired of our church being attacked, we're tired of our religious foundation not being attacked, we're tired of our families, we're tired of our culture being attacked without any response. And so America this last election I think stood up finally and said we're tired and we're going to fight back. The spiritual connection not just with the red states and blue states but even in America now the spiritual connection is coming to a head because that's the war. That's the war on terror. That's the culture war of the, of the 60s and 70s. It is a war against spirituality. Because if we don't come together, we're not going to have an America to be proud of, and we're not going to have an America that it makes any difference. If we lose this issue of the marriage amendment, this country would be so far gone, none of that would matter. How is it that we're in a country today where if you talk about God, somehow you're, you're a demon? I mean, it's, it's just flipped, flipped around, and we have to have courage to be able to speak truth. Almost every day. I see people come forth who are contacting us, who want to make a difference, who are having the courage to speak out. I believe that people like myself who have made vo vocal statements are empowering others to take their place and to be free thinking. I'm an individual for the first time in my life in America. Clarence Thomas is the freest man alive in, in, in sure between these two shores uh, because he's, he's an individual and he's willing to live and die as one. That's a, that's a blessing. Well, I'm free. No man has anything on me. I can speak what I want to speak. I can say what I want to say. And there's nothing no one can take from me. No party can change the message in the black community today if African-American people don't get saved and don't begin to respond to what the gospel has to say. Today, Martin Luther King is a media icon, and that's because he's not here, and people can bend and twist his words and his life any way they'd like to. He'd be a hot topic today. If Dr. King were alive, he'd be proclaiming Jesus Christ. And it would be interesting to see if the media would film and follow that message, because that's who they'd have. If they had Dr. King today, he'd be a prophet of God. You know, Dr. King was very similar uh, to Moses to me. His ministry reminded me of the ministry of Moses. And God did not allow the people to keep Moses' body. God hid Moses' body after he was gone. And Martin Luther King, in his own words, he says, you know, don't tell them I got the Nobel Peace Prize or that I wrote books. or don't try to make me into a symbol or an idol. Just say I tried to help somebody. And that's the message that Dr. King wanted people to remember, that he loved people and that he loved God. Ain't that good news? I think uh, there will be, I'm sure, filibuster, and we will definitely protest this. We will lobby in Washington seeking to get congressmen, uh, senators to stand up in a very firm, forthright manner with the determination to see this bill through. 
We plan to have a march on Washington on the 28th of August, at which time we will take a stand.